Hey! Fuck you! What? Listen to this podcast right now! Hey. Do you want to hear a fucking podcast about anything and everything? Yeah. Like movies, oh my music, God. television, and more? Oh my God. Well, you've come to the right place. Yes. Subscribe to Journey into Comics Network, oh. and you get Podcastrophy, oh hosted God. by me, yes. Dick. Why not throw a couple bucks to the Patreon? It's yes. your choice. Yeah. This is a Podcastrophy. That sounds so awesome. The following is a Journey to Comics Network production. Mmm. This is a tasty burger. You ever tried shawarma? Huh? There's a shawarma joint about two blocks from here. I don't know what it is, but I want to try it. Do you want some uh, coffee, Mr. Tully? Do I? Yes, have some. Yes, have some. Is butter a carb? Will you stop eating? We elves try to stick to the four main food groups. Candy, candy canes, candy corns, and syrup. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Foodies Watching Movies. I'm your host, Veronica. Joining me today is my co-host, Nate Phillips. What's up? How's it going? It's going pretty good. How are you doing? Um, I've been better, actually. As yeah. we record this on this Sunday, I've uh, fought with a bout of what I'm thinking was food poisoning. Um, it damn near killed me, and in all of the days for that to happen, it also happened on the day where... Our other cohorts also are not able to come, so it kind of just worked out, and we're kind of going old school here again <laughs> with a uh, very classic Foodies Watching Movies. Yep. It kind of mirrors the last Foodies Watching Movies people heard on the network where Brando and Kate were doing the Foodies Watching Movies during Fool's Week, and that was uh, they reviewed The Room and Disaster Artist, and that was a blast. Anyways, I'm glad to be back. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm glad to be back. Uh We've got a lot of interesting things to talk about today. Kind of all over the place, really. It's very random, yeah. Our uh, other co-hosts, Lauren and uh, Mr. AP, were not able to make it today, so we are Sans hosts. Shout so, out to them both. Yeah, shout out. Hope you guys are doing well. But yeah, so it's a, a very cold, dreary, lazy Sunday afternoon, and I thought that that would be the perfect time to watch an equally dreary almost dreary weird sci-fi movie <laughs> yeah it's funny because He's a creeper. i think today's theme is it's time and, it's time uh, we made an instagram post today with our band about something that it's time for and then it's time now for us to finally watch this movie you've been asking me for three years <laughs> yeah a long time to watch this movie and it kind of never got put on i had it downloaded and ready to watch and i you know got a yeah we know. just never felt like it was the right time to watch this movie um i had seen it when it was originally released in 2015 and this movie of course is ex machina starring oscar isaacs and uh what's the little guy from frank's name oh uh Donald gleason yeah that guy he was also in star wars and it was also interesting because oscar isaacs was in star wars as well hell yeah you know what really sucks right now what I don't have the mouse for the computer. Okay. So I don't have a mouse. <laughs> Anyways, because um, I was going to look up the gal that's in that movie. Oh, yeah, the girl from the new Tomb Raider movie, mm -hmm. whom I also believe is dating Michael Fassbender, but I can't remember her name. We're going to look it up right now. Alicia Vikander? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this movie has a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, audience score of eighty percent or eighty six percent, so it's like certified fresh. Obviously, uh, I had never seen this movie, avoided all spoilers for this movie, knew nothing of this movie, and I loved it. You did. It was crazy. I mean, uh, just a brief synopsis of the movie for people. Are we doing giving... spoilers? You know, I mean, it's three years later. I feel like people have seen this movie, so yeah. Okay, a we bit can of do. We can do some spoilers. Um, we don't need to go through the whole movie. But I'm just gonna brief through the thing. Okay. Domino Gleason's character Caleb wins a competition at his work. He uh, gets to go spend a week with the CEO of the company, who is Oscar Isaacs, uh, Nathan character. And uh, what really comes to light is that it's not so random. It was kind of intentional. 
This movie is a total mind bend. It like, does. It mind fucks you throughout because you, you're you're constantly. I feel like this whole movie, you're constantly led to feel like you should believe a certain like aspect or vision of the movie, mm-hmm. and then throughout the movie, like before the movies, like by the time the movie is over, you're like, oh my god, there was one thing that was said like early on. That if they would have just held true to that, <laughs> we would not be here right now, you know? See, I feel like this movie was really well done. It was it was really smart. It made you... Th- it stayed with me after I watched it for a long time just because I didn't like the ending. I loved the movie, but the ending was... It was just like, oh, stone cold, savage. Well, so, you know, Caleb uh, comes to find out that he's going to test an AI. Let me t- let me explain. It. Sure, let me explain it. as best you can. I was <laughs> doing it slowly to kind of build it up and, and to, you know, give them the full experience. Also, interesting to note that Nathan's last name was Bateman. I don't think they ever bring it up in the movie, but of course, to the credits, it says Nathan Bateman, Patrick mm, Bateman, American Psycho. There's some similarities in this movie. I'm just this saying. movie had so many little things going on, so many derivatives that you know you could Easter egg galore, you know. If you really think about it, like even just the way that it was shot with the cinematography and like the the film lit nerd in me was like, oh, I see what they did there with their symbolism, you know. <laughs> yeah, I kind of had like the what was that? Um, Metropolis is that a movie? Is that the movie from nineteen thirty two? I think it was. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know the movie but like, Metropolis. Like they had some shots that were similar to that too: low lighting, internal interior buildings. Oh yeah, close space. This was a very artsy movie for not being an art film if you know what i mean correct it was really well done though it was so believable so this movie is about this guy who is sent to his boss's private island estate like in the the wood i don't know where the hell this place it's is like what he does. private island it's like it's not Jurassic an island. park yeah yeah it's yeah he, he huge property big estate and so he gets sent there, and it's like this weird underground compound that's subterranean. It's a research facility because the boss of this company has developed a um, robot, and he wants this guy to see if this robot can pass this test to where she displays actual consciousness, whether or not it's real or not. So this whole movie is just total mindfuck, like you said. Uh, it's interesting to note that it... And it doesn't go where you think it's going. No, and I think that was the best part of the movie is the fact that it goes where you're not thinking because... And you don't know what kind of movie it is because there's some funny aspects to it. There's a lot of, like, like thriller aspects. Yes. Like, there's slight Suspense horror. Too. It's like the shiny... It's like Stanley Kubrick and... I don't know. It was a really interesting amalgamation of film styles in one very sinister, like, but very, like, creepy... Well, Ava, Smart way. which is uh, that lady's name, uh, Alicia Vikander. Am I saying that right? I don't know. Okay. Uh, she's the AI, and uh, she plays Ava. And Ava and Caleb kind of have this bond. And there's this whole back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Well, he's testing her Correct. to see if she can pass for human. The and she, test. she's like... You, you know, it's interesting to note because this is a word that gets used later, but she she easily manipulates him early on, mm-hmm. asking him a little bit more personal questions and then dropping questions like, are you single, essentially? Mm-hmm. And it's like, where is his brain going to go? Of course it's going to go to the emotional side of it, and then that changes things. So when that happens in the movie, it changes the dynamic. You come to find out Ava has the ability to like temporarily shut the power down in the place like by overloading the grid right. or some and shit. and you don't know... If what you're like the main character in this movie, you have no idea what's real and not. At one point in this movie, he was even questioning whether he was AI and like had to like cut his arm to see if he that would actually intense. bleed because he was just so screwed up from this experience. That was a really intense scene. My, just watching him cut himself down the road like that, it was. Whew. I was like, it was Jesus. an intense movie. This is not for the faint of heart. This is a a slow burn of a movie. It's like an hour and forty eight minutes long, so it's a little long, but. It was really worth watching. I I liked it. I give it like, I give it eight out of ten pizza slices. Eight out of ten pizza slices. Breaking the grid again because we usually go on a five, but we'll switch it to eight out of ten. Do we? Yeah, we always go on a five, and then we add the little extra toppings. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. It happens. 
Um, we've been away from this show for a while. You got to think the last time we did can, this show. Can it just be the thing where it just is a rotating thing? It just changes. It's just pizza. It's just pizza. As long as it's pizza. As long as it's pizza, I don't care. Sure, that's great. Um, that way you don't ever have the ability to compare whatever. Well, if it's pizza, should what we be giving it like small, medium, or large status? Oh, man, I didn't even think about that. I didn't either. either. We're missing an opportunity here. Uh, well, I will say that Dom Nog Leeson, awesome actor. He's obviously General Hux in the Star Wars movies. I saw him in Frank. Yeah. Um, that's an awesome movie with Michael Fassbender. What I, yeah, another thing of, t- to note about this movie is that those two actors um, were both in Star Wars together. And those movies came out the same year. And I had seen this movie before I saw Star Wars. So it was really weird for me seeing these actors in the Star Wars roles because they're so different from the characters oh, man, that I first saw like them in exactly. in this movie. Like opposites. They're almost exactly opposites. Yeah. That's so it was crazy. really weird for me watching Star Wars that year. Like, whoa. <laughs> and, of course, yeah, uh, that guy was in uh, Frank. That was yeah. a really good movie I'd recommend seeing, too. Oscar Isaacs, of course, was also in X-Men Apocalypse. Oh, as yeah, Apocalypse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Poe Dameron. He's been in Star a lot Wars of stuff. Movies. Yeah. Uh, Oscar Isaacs killing it. Uh, I will what did say, you think of Oscar Isaacs seeing as you saw Star Wars first, and that was kind of like your first foray into him as an actor? I, You know, it's weird because you pick up on the sincerity and the Poe of him, like how he has that Poe-ness about him, I guess is what we're going to say here. <laughs> okay. Because, is that know, a quality now? Well, because Poe Dameron, you know, he's this gentle, really hard on his sleeve guy, wants to do the right <laughs> thing, wants to end the fight, you know, the noble soldier that never does wrong. Mm-hmm. And Nathan's kind of that guy, you know. And uh, by the way, funny thing, what's this? The mouse. It's literally been sitting here the whole time. I just didn't, I couldn't see it. It was John wow. cena me right in front of my face. <laughs> I couldn't see it. Um, How about that? But no, I loved, I loved Oscar Isaacs in this movie because he's visceral. He plays multiple levels. He's the smartest yeah. guy in the room and also playing an actor as a drunk. And he's also a drunk. And there's all these levels and tears, and his storyline ends in a way you wouldn't expect. Right. Let's not give that away. Well, correct. I mean, that's a deep spoiler. Deep. Yeah, cut, I don't want to do a deep spoiler. All I will say I is... I want people to watch this movie and enjoy it. All I want to say is that Ava finds a way to deconfine herself from this experiment. And that I want the reason I'm bringing that up, and I'm not bringing up any details of that, that that's super ambiguous, right? The reason I'm bringing that up is because it made me think, and I couldn't pose this question without kind of giving that away. Did it, as soon as you watch that, make you go, what if, what if they're fucking AI that are like out in the world right now? What right. the shit? Like, should I check myself? <laughs> Do I have riblets that are actually circuitry? You know, like. Right. And this movie, the dialogue in it was so smartly written. Like, it's totally fucking believable, you know? Yes. The science they make up behind it is like. Oh, well, yeah, sure. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> and like I said, it's funny because you are literally spending the whole movie kind of like led to believe that the main character has one perspective. Right. And then the, the literally the tides turn in an instant and you're just like, oh, shit, no. Uh-huh. Whoa. Oh, man. Come on now. We can't go right. back. And when we were talking about watching this movie, you're like, well, am I going to like, am I going to hate this movie at the end? Or, and I was just like. This movie is just so crazy. It's kind of just like at the end, you're just like, oh, man. <laughs> and that's kind of how the movie ended. And we were all just kind of like, oh, yeah. Man. Fate worse than death. <laughs> yeah. Kinda. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> I got I guess I have to rate this thing. Yeah. Pizza. I'm going to give it a four out of five pizza slices. Mm-hmm. And you're eight out of ten. So I guess I'm <laughs> right, also rounding up to eight out of ten. If we're mathing and doing fractions. Um, I'm giving it 8 out of 10 pizza slices. However, it's got that spicy jalapeno and bacon because <laughs> it gives you a little something. It's got a little kick to it. It throws you off. I mean, yeah. this movie's got boobs and it's got... And it stays with you and much like the heartburn you would get from yes, that pizza. And it's got really good cinematography, really well done. And also the effects are brilliant. Oh, yeah, I know. I mean, the it's AI minimalistic green screening. Looks so cool. Absolutely, absolutely well done. Mm-hmm. And... uh Speaking of AI, we're going to have to try to keep up on our promise to Miss Lauren and catch up on Westworld, another show about AI. Oh, shit. That's coming back on um, soon, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it's the weekend of my birthday, the Sunday of my birthday, which is this next, actually a week from today, Yeah, which would be not true at all. This Sunday, folks, for you listening to the show. I'm time traveling again. We're doing that damn time travel jazz again. 
Uh, I really, really, really loved Ex Machina. And, well, I'm uh, glad you liked it because you've been putting it off for years. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm so sorry. glad we finally I'm watched sorry. it. Okay, I've been waiting. So, but I have a question. Yeah. Can there be a sequel? Is there anywhere else they can go with this story? I mean, there are questions that are still left unanswered in that universe. I'm sure you could make it into an entire franchise, but the point is, no. It said what it needed to say. It was a statement piece. Okay, it wasn't in enough. it for the it money. Was, this was like it was in it for a the commentary. Science. This was a social commentary. Yeah, of what's going to happen when uh, Alexas start talking and doing crazy things like playing Halloween music unprompted at 3 in the morning or playing Pop Goes the Weasel unprompted at 3 in the morning. Yeah, you've been reading a lot of those stories online. Shit creeps me out. Like, <laughs> Alexa say goodnight Clarice to some lady who's going to bed. Yeah. What? This is why I don't want to have one of those things. No, hell no. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm, hell no. I got it. I, I can the one that really life. got me, though, was the one where the Alexa was on and the mom's like, Alexa, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm trying to learn new things. And the mom's like, I did not tell you to do that. Stop doing that. And she said, okay, and turned off. Yeah. What? Freaky. It's freaky. I think that conversation inspired our movie choice today. A little bit, yeah, subconsciously. Because yeah. I was like, oh shit, we haven't watched Ex Machina in three years. Let's watch it. <laughs> yeah, so now we checked that one off the list. Now we've just got a couple others to catch up on and watch so we can... Keep... We also enjoyed this movie with uh, a damn fine piece of pie. Oh, I haven't tried that yet. <gasps> That's right. Do you want to get a piece now? Yeah, I have it in the microwave. I'm just going to do this. All right, turn it on. So we went to Baker Square seconds. for lunch today and picked up a strawberry rhubarb pie. And uh, I thought it was damn delicious. It's one of my favorite kinds of pies. Been on a pie kick lately, like a shitty diner coffee and pie kick. I think it's the Twin Peaks in me. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. We were going <laughs> to do a Twin Peaks inspired introduction today. But you're saving it for something else, which we can't spoil. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll announce that soon. We've got some Twin Peaks stuff coming up, everybody. <laughs> yeah, don't overheat that pie in the microwave because then it's like liquid hot magma. I can already tell you it's liquid hot magma. Mm hmm. We don't have any whipped cream or cool whip. Do you prefer whipped cream or cool whip? Whipped cream. Yeah, me too. I don't really like cool whip. Whipped cream. Mm -hmm. Whipped cream is life, yo. Well, we don't have any of that. Sorry. Fuck. I wish we had it. And God we don't have damn. any ice cream either to make it true, all the mom. That's true. That's true. Um, but that's okay. So Good while we're pie, here, I'm going to let this cool for a second here. I actually have some stats that I do want to pull up because um, we are a movie podcast. We're going to talk about movies. We're going to talk about food. Here's some movie stuff for you folks. Uh, this is as of the weekend of April 15th. Here are your top box office numbers with Rotten Tomato scores. That way you guys have an idea of what you might want to go out and see. These are numbers according to Rotten Tomatoes. So right now it looks like a ass kicker of a movie is A Quiet Place. I don't know if I have any interest in seeing that movie. Do you know about it? Yeah. Okay, so John Krasinski, Emily Blunt, they have a family. They can't speak or do anything. It's mostly all sign language. They have to like pour sand before they walk anywhere because any sound is almost like tremors and it causes a monster creature to come and kill them, right? So they can't talk. They have to be super silent. And you have to like think of all like the crazy ways to be quiet. The movie is literally silence and then jump scares because, of course. Yeah, I don't think I'd want that in um, my life. $50.2 million. I do believe it was this opening weekend, so good for that movie. It did very well. God damn. Um, I have said, and I will continue to champion John Krasinski and Emily Blunt as being um, Mr. Fantastic Mister Fantastic, and Sue Storm in Marvel's reboot <laughs> of the Fantastic Four. I think that would be absolutely great. Uh, coming in at number <laughs> two, I, I feel like this movie's been out for a couple weeks, maybe since like March, mid-March, uh, Ready Player One. Yeah, we haven't seen that one yet, but we are definitely interested in seeing it. 100%. There are over three... Our friends told us it was great. 100. 300 Easter eggs in the movie. Oh, wow. Over 300. Well, I believe it. Crazy. Because they can use avatars from all kinds of different things and pull from places and, you know... As long as they own that property. Well, or if they just reference it and then give credit, because you can do that in movies now, you know? Mm. It's almost like advertising or whatever. Uh, the John Cena flick. Oh, Ready Player One, 74%, and a, a Quiet Place at 95% on Rotten Tomatoes, both certified fresh. Uh, the John Cena flick, Blockers. Never heard 82 of that. What? He's a parent, and I think his daughter goes to college, and then he's like afraid that his daughter's going to go like to a frat house and have terrible things that... You know, mm -hmm. college. Mm -hmm. So um, he Who told John Cena it was okay. He had a movie career. 
John Cena did, and you can't see him. Uh, it's really That's okay cra- with me. <laughs> it's really crazy, because I think he's a phenomenal actor. Everything he's been in, Trainwreck, uh, we watched that. Did we watch that in Mississippi? Yeah. Trainwreck? That I remember was with that. Amy Schumer? I remember that, yeah. And that was pretty funny. He was good in that. Mm-hmm. Um, for some reason, I just flashed back to us outside while it's raining, and you were having a cigarette after that movie and just talking about it, and you were like, I I don't want to like John Cena. <laughs> I'm so mad. I know, but it was so good. I was like, Damn it, really it. Was. I didn't want to like John I, Cena. <laughs> I do want to see Blockers. It made 20.6 million. Also, Ready Player One, and it's like whatever weekend it's on, made 24.6 million. Now, to the next one. And of course, this has been talked about on all kinds of podcasts across this network. Black Panther, still in theaters, did 8.8 million this past weekend. 97% Rotten Tomatoes score. Just Clear absolutely winner. killing it. So, uh, to, uh, and of course, movies that open this weekend. Also, Isle of Dogs is now out. But oh yeah, I can't wait to see that. It didn't get any press, and like they stopped pushing for it, and like they limited the release from how many theaters it was going to go into. So it only made four point seven million on opening weekend. Yeah, and that has like a stacked cast. Do you know the name of well, all? The, uh, that's I mean, how almost all of his movies turn out. You know, I guess it's just. Dumb, and I don't. I'm, I, I'm excited I'm, about that movie, though. I mean, let's just we're gonna list off all the people who are in this Isle of Dogs movie. Brian Cranston. Uh, I don't know who Koyu Rankin is. Uh, maybe a new actor or actress. Uh, Edward Norton, uh, Leave Schreiber, Bill Murray, Scarlett Johansson, Jeff Goldblum, um, Bob Balamba, uh, Greta Gerwig. I mean, Francis McDermott, Yoko Ono, what? Uh, Tilda Swinton. I love Wes. This is going to be a conversation for the Wes Anderson episode that we have because we have in our group um, a divide. AP does not like that. I typically don't like Wes Anderson stuff either. This movie has me very intrigued, though. I'm absolutely I feel like you haven't seen enough of his movies to even have an opinion. Um, Okay. Did you see see Fantastic Mr. Fox? No. Did you see The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou? Yes. Did you see The Royal Tenenbaums? Yes. Did you see Bottle Rocket? No. Did you see Rushmore? Yes. Did you like Rushmore? Yeah, Rushmore's good. Uh, what, uh, J- J- uh, Jason Bateman, right? No. no. No, no, no. What's his name? He's the guy. Jason Schwartzman. Schwartzman. Thank you. Yeah. I always fuck that up every time, too. <laughs> you liked Moonrise Kingdom. I did I like that movie. That. that is actually a really good movie. That's I did probably not one of like my favorites. The Jarling Unlimited, right? Is that? Yeah, I didn't like that one either. That was dumb. Did you see The Grand Budapest Hotel? No, that's one on my list. That's, that's really one of the ones one. I have not yet been able to see. I like that. Like I said, I've given Wes Anderson a chance. I just feel like he is very, you can pinpoint his movies. You know his style. It's. I mean, obviously every director is like that. I don't want you to get, but for me, his style isn't always what I'm in the mood for. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Because he does a lot of that sappy, bittersweet, feel good at the end type shit all the time. Like every time it's sad, there's a bad part in the movie. It starts happy and funny. They're great. There's laughter. Everyone's having fun. And then it like has this dark twist and everyone's like, oh, fuck. Things are going bad now. <laughs> and then somebody probably dies because that's just how those movies go. And then there's this reflective moment of like, oh, what are we doing? Life is so much bigger than that because this life was so important. And why do we do that? So then everybody like rallies just together. Shut up and eat your pie before oh, it gets cold. Are you mad that I like called that out directly? <laughs> no. Okay. It's okay. Um, you can, you're entitled to your shitty opinion. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's all right. Um, <laughs> no, but um, I'm going to have you like cover some ground for a minute. I'm going to take a bite of this here pie. I don't know uh, if you wanted to get into any of those lists. I would do leaving first, so long, sayonara, see you later, sucka. Uh, all right, I guess. <laughs> I feel like I'm just going to scan this list because a lot of these things I don't care about. This Obviously, is what's, do the uh, highlights. Yeah, this is what's leaving Netflix in April, y'all, just in case there you want to know. There are some that really hurt. 30 Days of Night. Out. Ace Ventura 1 and 2. Mm. American Pies 1 and 2. Mm. Apollo 13. Ouch. Yeah. But I have it on Blu-ray, so I don't care. Batman, Batman and Robin, Batman Forever, Batman Returns. Ouch. Caddyshack. Actually, I know why Batman's off. You know what's funny is I feel like I just watched almost every single one of these movies except the American Pie movies. So the um, the Batmans, I know why they're off. Why? I'm pretty sure because the DC app is about to launch soon and they're going to be doing everything streaming exclusively through there. Oh, no shit. 
Yeah, it'll be just like Netflix. And actually, that's where the the, DC uh, the app, Titans, huh? the Titans TV show is going to be exclusive to the DC All Access or whatever the fuck they're going to call it. Hmm. But, How much are they charging for that? I want to say seven ninety nine a month. I don't know. Mm, I'm not I sure, but you have the know. library. You have the library of every DC movie, you've animated and otherwise. I don't know. And some other Warner Brothers stuff. I mean, it's it, it is kind of a, a, a good. <laughs> it's going to be. I mean, everybody's going to go to that concept because then it's direct to market. Hey, I'm a Disney fan. I go fucking Disney app. Now I would pay. For they're that. already they're already setting it up. You know that, right? It's going to have Disney, Marvel, Star Wars. That I would pay for. Everything. I mean, Harry Potter now, if the Fox deal goes through. 2019. Yeah, but can't you just still buy all this shit on DVD? Well, yeah, of course you can buy stuff on DVD, but everybody wants to have the convenience of not leaving their ass and being able to change their choice. That is what it's come down to. Okay, so anyway, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is leaving. Who cares? Cool runnings. Aw, damn. Uh, Death Sentence, Dolphin Tale, Deuce of Hazards, Eagles vs. Shark. What are these movies? The Men Who Stare at Goats, Never Let Me Go. Was that the one that we were supposed to watch? Never Let Me Go? Yeah. No, that's not the one. I I can't. That was that, that vampire movie that Lauren and I were talking about. Let the right one in. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. I knew I'd get there. Okay. Uh, the Shawshank Redemption. Wild Wild West, whole nine yards. It's like all of the 90s are just leaving. Small soldiers. Uh, let's see what else. The Prestige. Mm. Exit through the gift shop. Kung Fu Panda 3. And a movie called Begin Again. Well, okay. Bummer. That is a bummer, man. A couple uh, of, of things course, are a bummer. Uh, some of these aren't gone yet. It's sad to see the prestige going. It's sad to see exit through the gift shop going. Um, looking at some of these other ones here, so, you know, some of these you don't really care too much because they're you've seen them so many times. Oh, the god, the pursuit of happiness, sad fest, two million. That's what that movie should really be called. Hey, how was your pie? Did you like it, folks? That pie was it damn good. That was damn good. That was delicious. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do the Gordon Ramsay damn because it's damn. that's exactly how I feel right now. Damn. That was delicious. That was delicious. Yeah, I really like Baker Square strawberry rhubarb pie. It was that. It was either that or we were going to get the strawberry cream cheese cake pie or some shit. Or both. Yeah, at one point we had thought about getting both, but then our other uh, co-hosts were not able to make it, so we made the rational adult decision to only get one pie. Now we can just enjoy that over the next day. And I know, I'm so pleased. <laughs> well, how about this? You just told everybody what's leaving the Netflix. I'm going to tell everybody what's coming into Netflix now in April. Some of these are already available as of April 1st. Uh, some of these aren't yet available, obviously. I'll go with April 1st. The big ones out the gate that it looks like that are interesting to note are going to be on Netflix now. Uh, I want to just say Deep Blue Sea because it's a Samuel L. Jackson movie. <laughs> Makes me think of the Chappelle Show sketch with the Samuel L. Jackson beer. Drink, bitch. You know, like, <laughs> they ate me. A fucking shark ate me. Drink, bitch. <laughs> like, I, I absolutely love Chappelle Show. Um, me too. Uh Iron Giant's going to be on Netflix now. I don't uh, care. Jackass 2.5. Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chess, Queen of the Damned, Scarface, Sin City, Speed Racer, and Hot Diggity Damn 7 is now available on Netflix. That was going oh, to be our choice for today. We were going to talk about the movie 7. I guess we're going to have to talk about that next time. Although next time we're going to have a special guest. And I don't want to have that special guest watch 7 because that will be a total downer. Oh no, that next show we do with our special guest next That's week. That's going to be lit. I can't wait. It's off the rails. Like there's no rules for that show. It might be not foodies watching movies even though we call it that. Like We'll just see what happens. It's going to be fun, folks. Okay, getting back to this list here. Other stuff that's going to end up on Netflix here. Oh god, they're putting 7 pounds on Netflix. Boo. <laughs> but another sad fest through Sad Fest 3 million Will here, Smith folks. went through a period of doing really sad movies. He was trying remember to... Remember I Am Legend? Yeah. Oh, that one was so sad. Yeah, well, because he did like... Uh. Um, also, Hitchcock was sad. Mm-hmm. The superhero movie. I liked that movie. And then Pursuit of Happiness was sad. Mm-hmm. 
I Am Legend was sad. Was Seven sad. Pounds was He was trying to out sad Adam Sandler at I that I think he time. was trying to break away from Wild Wild West. Yeah, but him and Adam Sandler were duking it back and forth for like saddest movie all time, you know? And you would think, oh man, Adam Sandler just released a really sad movie and Rain Over Me and then... Will Smith's like, hold my beer. I'm going to show these motherfuckers what sad is and drop seven pounds on their ass. Um, that movie will never be reviewed on this show, folks. It is too fucking depressing, and I would never, ever, 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 ever suggest anyone watch it. Word. Um, that's just legit. You know what? I will say, this list is shit. There's not really a lot of good stuff coming to yeah, Netflix in April. Not they, really. They've done me dirty on my birthday month here because <laughs> that's a shitty list. Um, back to some stuff here. I want to say we were talking about Quiet Place earlier at 95% on Rotten Tomatoes, 86% of people saying they liked it. Um, I'll give you the quick synopsis because I didn't officially do that. In the modern horror thriller A Quiet Place, a family of four must navigate their lives in silence after mysterious creatures that hunt by sound threaten their survival. If Dude, they hear why you, they, they just hunt fucking you. move? I think it's because it's the whole planet. Oh. <laughs> I feel like it's everywhere. It's not just like, oh, they live well, in Delaware, I, and all of a sudden Delaware's got these I fucking saw monsters. The, every time I saw the trailer for this movie, I kind of just like scrolled past it because I don't typically watch scary movies like that anymore. Yeah, um, everybody, I mean, uh, the Podcastrophy team reviewed it, folks, so if you do want to get a review on that movie, jump back to last week's episode of Podcastrophy. I think that's episode, thir- oh no, it's actually tomorrow's episode of Podcastrophy. Sorry, timey-wimey and stuff. Tomorrow's episode of Podcastrophy will feature a review for A Quiet Place in great detail. Well, good. We can um, use, we can get their review, so that way I don't have to go see it. There we go. <laughs> uh, like I said, everybody's stoked to, to get to see Ready Player One if you haven't yet. Uh, not as critically acclaimed. I have a lot of people saying that they see the movie and all they see are the Easter eggs. Mm-hmm. Like, is it too much? And they're not seeing the movie because you're getting sensory overload. You can't fucking... To well, even tell people what the story is about. Maybe on their like, third viewing of it, then they'll appreciate the story. The critical, the critics' consensus was this. Ready Player One is a sweetly nostalgic thrill ride that neatly encapsulates Spielberg's strengths while adding another solidly engrossing adventure to his filmography. Sweet. I'm on board. Same, same. Uh, and uh, what's that kid that's in this movie? What the hell is he in? It Was he Baby Driver too? Was that kid Baby Driver also? No, that's Ty Sheridan. I know why I know Ty Sheridan. He was um, the most recent uh, Scott Summers in X-Men Apocalypse oh. and whatnot. Yeah, he's the new. Okay. Yeah, and another guy we probably won't be hearing. But have you heard about this shit with TJ Miller? That's that's movie no. news that we can talk about. TJ Miller is currently arrested from the FBI because he created a fake bomb threat. What? Yeah, he's a he's a fucking celebrity dude who was in Silicon Valley, the first Deadpool movie. He's had appearances all across the board, done voice acting cameos and shit. Yeah. He's a director. He's a director. I mean, he was on Hot Ones, for God's sakes. And I feel like maybe success got him. And he went off the rails and started doing some crazy shit. And he put on a fake bomb threat. And the FBI went and arrested him. Why would he do that? I don't, I don't know anything know. about this. But if you've noticed in the um, Deadpool 2 marketing, mm-hmm. you've not seen any of him. No, all. nor would you since the allegations of like misconduct on the, set. And you that's know? the other thing, too, that is, is, I guess is interesting. Dude's to just know. an asshole. Yeah, he, I, you I know, don't know. I, I kind of got that when I watched him on Hot Ones that he was kind of a dick, but. I don't remember watching his episode. Yeah, it was all right. I love Simon Pegg, by the way. I just saw he's in the movie. That's cool. Yeah, I love Simon Pegg, too. Um, ben Mendelsohn, he was great in uh, Star Wars. Um, again, Blockers. Yeah, the, the synopsis for Blockers. Uh, when three parents stumble upon their daughter's pack to lose their virginity at prom. Oh, that's the story. Sorry. Ew. They launch a covert one-night operation to stop the teens from sealing the deal. I have no interest in seeing um, a piece of shit movie like that. It's supposed to be straight-up comedy, though. And then, um, can, can I share this? It's insulting what Hollywood thinks is funny. But, it. I mean, they make John Cena butt chug a beer. For real. It's insulting what Hollywood thinks is funny. It really is. You think look that's at the, funny? No, because look at the audience score. 50% say they like it. I would give this movie a shot. Only because I'm you sure, love wrestling. Not even. I want to see what John Cena does with his acting career. Come okay. on now. I mean, sometimes he hits it Because out you park. love wrestling. Yeah, I do love wrestling. Okay. Totally. <laughs> also, check out Journey into Wrestling every other Wednesday alongside of Foodies Watching <laughs> Movies here on the Journey into Comics Network. Cheap pop. Bow. <laughs> shameless um, plug. Shameless plug back to it. Um... I saw an infographic the other day about Black Panther and all the f- records it's breaking, and it's like mind-boggling, like bogglement. 
That's the word again. I said that earlier when I was eating yeah, my boggle mint. We didn't even talk about lunch yet. What we had. What did you have at uh, Baker Square earlier this day? Oh, yeah. We've been frequenting diners lately. So um, today I went with breakfast or brunch, I suppose, because I usually only ever get lunch when we go out because I'm not typically a breakfast food fan. But today I went with uh, breakfast and they had this sweet deal. It's like called the four square or some shit. Yeah, four square. You get to pick four different breakfast items for like eight bucks. So I got a strawberry cream cheese filled crepe, which was goddamn delicious. I ate that first and inhaled it in about a minute and a half. And I got scrambled eggs with American cheese, crispy hash browns, bacon, and I added an order of white toast. Shit. And it was delicious. It looked like everything was cooked pretty perfectly, too. It was. It was no complaints. The bacon was like exactly how I would cook it. Undercooked, yeah. No, it was not undercooked at all. It was chewy, but still like dark enough to be considered probably almost overcooked. Oh, it's got to be crispy, though. I hate crispy bacon. I love it. Ugh, it's where I we hate differ. Crispy bacon. So it's where we differ, I guess. I know. <laughs> Can't win them all, You're folks. You're so sad about that. I am. You know, <laughs> Uh, another movie that's coming out soon, haha! Ha, Incredibles two coming out real soon here. What yeah, do you we think watched about the trailer for that. I've been waiting for this movie. I want to say my whole life, but it's only been like ten years. Yeah, uh, it looks amazing. I love the story. Yeah, I can't that, wait like, to take my little son to see it. Yes, he's gonna fall in love with Dash. Yeah, well, he's already seen the original Incredibles, and he really liked it. Yeah, oh, I remember that. Yeah, oh, you yeah. let us borrow your copy of it, Duh. and he loved it. So Duh. I think he's gonna really like seeing the new one too. Absolutely. Uh, this movie is cool because, you know, when the last movie is happening and ending, the superheroes are kind of having to be anonymous and go into the vigilante mode, kind of like what we see in the Arrowverse. This movie is like them trying to restore their faith uh, to the public. Right. And Elastigirl kind of becomes the beacon of hope in that regard. Right. So that means uh, Mr. Incredible has to stay home with the kids. Stay at home, Pop. Yeah. Do you imagine how difficult it would be having a super baby that like you have that had unpredictable powers and you had to be the caretaker for it. Do you want to know something crazy? What? You want to blow your mind? Yes. Violet. What's her power? Force fields. Ultraviolet. Oh. Dash. Yeah. What's he do? He runs really fast. He dashes. Yeah. Jack Jack. He's a jack of all trades. He can do all of the things. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah, right, right, right. Uh-huh. Isn't that cool? Yeah, yeah. Um, I love. I, yeah, I'm stoked. Also, Samuel L. Jackson in that flick. I wonder, is there a? I actually want to look for on Rotten Tomatoes Incredibles too because I want to get a cast list and see because I know that. Uh, it's pretty much the same cast, right? Well, no, because Bob Odenkirk was in there. He's new. Well, I meant the same returning cast. Oh, absolutely, definitely the same returning cast. Hey, here we go. Uh, yeah, let's see. We've got. Uh, Craig T. Nelson as Bob, Mr. Incredible. Holly Hunter as Helen. I Uh, love Holly Hunter so much. She's just such a little spark plug. Well, whoever's doing this on Rotten Tomatoes did not do a good job because it's not filled all the way out. And it doesn't say that Samuel... Oh, it does say Samuel L. Jackson's in the movie, but it doesn't say anybody else. Well, it hasn't even come out yet, so give it time. Yeah, correct. (laughs) Do you know what's awesome about later this year that I can't wait for us to do at some point on this podcast? That we probably will have to do some sort of cross-promotion with another show I'm on. What? Journey into Comics. Because it's the 10-year anniversary of Dark Knight this year. Yeah, we were talking about that. At some point, we're going to dive into that. That's one of my all-time favorite movies. I could write a book on The Dark Knight. Mm -hmm. Um, I've seen it probably most of any movie all time. Mm -hmm. I'm laughing. I mean, I I really... It's a a good movie. It's a really good movie. We were just watching, catching up on uh, Gotham. I know this is not um, a food or movie topic, but I will never pass up an opportunity to talk about Gotham. Yeah, so we were watching that, and... um, Big stuff happened on Gotham. I will not spoil any of that for anybody. Unless but you... there were so many parallels with uh, The Dark Knight. Oh, yes, absolutely. And they also did, I mean, not only did they take... And parallels with 89 Batman. Absolutely. They did Sorry, a great job of doing that in cinematography and how things are shot and how things are s- staged and set up. Across the board, Gotham is killing it. It's it's Gotham is like, I can't say enough how much i love gotham it's like you can't un gotham once you've got them no like it's the flash perfect. is not like, as good now no to me. nothing's is ever gonna be as good as gotham damn it it's ridiculous it <laughs> really know. is it's it's in my opinion one of the best shows on tv right now 
Absolutely. It's definitely the best show on TV right now. Yeah. It's one of the best shows ever. Ooh, I love it. I love it. I mean, it does a great job of giving you a universe with Batman and cast without Batman. Right. Everybody else is there putting themselves in place. Everybody, please just uh, go watch Gotham now. Yes. It's on Netflix. Yes, do it. First three (laughs) seasons, and of course, by the time the fourth season is over... A month later, they'll have it on Netflix. You can binge the hell out of that show. Right, and then when you have to like wait forever for it to come back on and it'll be sad and depressing, you can watch all the other Batman stuff and think about how good Gotham is and how much better it is than all the shit you're forced to watch. Yes, exactly. Well said. Um, I don't know if that really matters. Zachary Levi responding to people saying that his suit's not... He's like, I'm ripped. You're not Chris Pratt ripped, buddy. Sorry. Yeah, why is this news? I don't want to talk about that. Because uh, he's <laughs> going to be the whatchamacallit and the thing of a thing. We covered that on JIC, too. Um, man, what else do we... Oh, you know what I wanted to do today is a fun little game that I thought about. Okay. So you're going to pick an actor. One of your favorite actors. One of my favorite actors? Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter who. Actor or actress? Or it either, does not matter? Either. Yep. Hmm. Do I have to do it right now? Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I have to do it oh, now. Oh, no, I'm on the spot. Yep, okay. a little bit. One of my favorite actors, um, Gary Oldman. Okay, so now I, what I want you to do. Do you know what I want you to do? No. Top five Gary Oldman movies. Go. What do you think <sighs> are his top five? If you need a minute to write. Well, that's so interesting because I was just talking to somebody about this. Literally, like, yesterday. Oh, yeah, you were <laughs> cheap. I saw that post. Well, oh. I didn't know this was your game. I, That's you said totally think of an actor, and I was no, like... it's great. I no. was thinking of an actor, and I thought of him because I thought of him yesterday. It's perfect. It's fine. You still have to rank him. It okay. doesn't mean that's going to be easy. Gary. I'm writing a little list. Gray. Okay. So he was in Sid and Nancy. Sure, yeah. He was... Uh, wait, am I just naming movies or am I naming the ones that I like the no, most? No, you're going to create a top five. Ooh. In your opinion, his top five best. And yes, Dark Knight is on that list. Oh, I know. better be number it's on, one. It's on the list. You just made the list. It just made the list. Oh, see, there you go with your Jericho again. Shut up. Jericho podcast. Shout out to Talk is Jericho. you got to love that show. Um, number three. Oh, number four, interesting. Number five. All right, I'm just making my little list here. Hold yeah, on. Yeah, you do your thing. Get it all prepped up here, folks. Mm-hmm. I'm going to jump around the interwebs and see if there's any interesting things I can find about movie news. Um, let's go to uh, google.com, the Googleplex here, and we're going to search movie news. Oh, Cinema Blend. What up, Cinema Blend? You got anything good for me? Oh, wow. Interesting. Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, Rampage is doing really well. Um, That's Dwayne The Rock Johnson's new movie. He's another um, actor, former wrestler. Um, Super, super stoked to see Rampage because I hear it's actually pretty fun. It's a fun little movie that doesn't do bad, and it broke the curse. It might be the best video game movie ever made. Mm-hmm. As uh, which is saying a lot considering how terrible all the video game movies are ever. <laughs> do you know who Uwe, what, how do you say his name? It's U-W-E-B-O-L, I think, Uwe Boll. He did the movie Postal. I don't know. Do you know who that is? You don't know who that <laughs> no, is? You're re- I'm trying to write my list here. And, uh, oh, I'm you're asking me you. fucking questions. I'm throwing you off your game. That yeah. happens sometimes. Uh, oh, Yoda is rumored to be appearing in uh, episode nine. No fucking shit. He's going to show Luke how to be a force ghost. Come on now. We know that. I mean, uh, okay, new solo Star Wars spot is um, hilarious and exciting, huh? Is that what you think, huh? Okay, I have my list. You have your list now. Yeah, and it's in no particular order. Okay. It's in no particular order. It's just what I thought of. These are the top five performances of Gary Oldman that I really appreciate. Um, I really loved him in Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Cool. That was such an awful movie, like so cheesy and overdone and dramatic, and the acting was insane, but I just, it was... It appealed to my little goth heart, you know, in my youth. Oh, yeah. Loved also, Keanu. mad shout out to the train of our existence making a cameo on every podcast we do here on the Journey into Comics Network. Yeah, it's well. so annoying. You know what's funny? Uh, wow, it's obnoxious right now. Holy cow. What, what is really funny is where was I at? I was somewhere. And, uh, I think I was like, 
I don't even remember where we were at. We were somewhere. And somebody was like, oh, there's your train of your existence, like, because they listen to the network and shit. And I was like, oh, yeah, there it is, too. Like, <laughs> holy shit. Like, I didn't realize, you know, like, yeah. you just say that thing over and over and over again, and you don't really put any stock into it. And then mm-hmm. somebody says it back to you, and you're like, oh, you were paying attention. Cool. <laughs> you know, that's a great thing. All right. So back to my list. Yeah, I love Dracula. It's not my number one performance of his. My number one performance of his is uh, Immortal Beloved, where he played Beethoven. That's a really intense, excellent uh, romantic drama. Heavy. Super heavy. Well, it's heavy. It's it's on point with Amadeus in drama level. But he's excellent in that. I loved him in The Fifth Element. That's one of my favorite Gary Oldman movies. Okay. Uh, he played the bad guy, you know, with the ridiculous accent. Yeah. And uh, Sid and Nancy, where he played Sid Vicious, he was really believable and looked just like him. Yeah. And The Dark Knight. Hell yeah. Also made the list. And then I also made a little asterisk because he was in an episode of Friends. That Of course. <laughs> that was really Do you know which one funny. it was? Was it the one with the couch or was it the one where Phoebe falls <laughs> down the stairs? Was it the one where Rachel goes to high school for her 40th reunion? What was it? It was the one where Monica and Chandler got married. Oh my God! Wow. See you like you just like boom. I know it. No questions asked. That's amazing. <laughs> or at their wedding or whatever, or something like that. So I guess now I've got to do this. Mm-hmm. I made this yeah, game. Your turn. I made this game. I put no thought into this. So um, I don't believe you. I really don't. I really put. <laughs> I, I put no thought into this. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go with man. Favorite I, actor. My favorite actor. Who's your favorite actor, Nate? All time favorite. Who's your all time favorite actor? Man, um, that's that, a really okay. Too much pressure. No, 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 Pick no. It's not, too, like. it's not too much pressure because when I think about it, I have a couple like clear, concise answers that I can go to. Okay, so pick one. So part of me would say Samuel L. Jackson, which is obvious, but that that, that there's too much of a catalog for him. I, I mean, I would be yeah. Here you for can't weeks. pick five. I couldn't pick five, not even if I tried. Um, but with a more limited scope, as it were. You know what? Just for fun, Michael Keaton. Ooh, I and, like this game already. Okay, so Michael Keaton. Uh, do you want to fill them in with anything? Do you want to look over here and see any news, if there's anything interesting? I thought this was an interesting headline. Watch Robert De Niro and Ben Stiller pop up on SNL in Meet the Parent Sketch. Oh, we haven't watched the new SNL yet. I said there was a new I one. I know. We're going to have to watch that tonight. Okay, so. Okay, uh, yeah, Keaton. Meet the Parents. That was funny. I remember that movie. Uh, the sequel was slightly less funny. I don't know. Sometimes awkward humor, it makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> the first Meet the Parents had the the volleyball spike where he was, breaks her nose. Remember? It was very uncomfortable to it watch was. that movie. That was a hard movie to get through. It was super funny. I mean, whatever, but... Ugh. We can also talk about both those things. Those are good to discuss if you would like. That's your choice. I feel like both of those headlines are Journey into Comics headlines. We didn't cover them this week. Infinity War outgrows Star Wars. The Oh, could... Avengers Infinity War outgrows Star Wars The Force Awakens. I mean, they've already projected uh, that probably. It, it, they've already projected it's most likely going to have a higher opening weekend and if it sets that kind of course and I mean of course it opens globally the same day. So it's going to we're going to get a global number across the board. Uh yeah, you'll read here if you want. I'll uh, get back to this list. Box Office Pro is estimating that Avengers Infinity War will have a domestic opening weekend gross of $235 million to $255 million. Star Wars The Force Awakens has the biggest opening weekend ever with $247.97 million. And it's increasingly possible that the superhero movie will reach this number according to Box Office. Uh, Let's see. Star Wars The Force Awakens is a titan through through and through, propelled by the fact that it was, well, Star Wars. Now it's time to see if someone can steal the crown. It's crazy because Marvel and Disney just made a fuck ton on Black Panther. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if you saw that. Oh, I already took it down. But, like, uh, it, it's made, like, 600, what is it, 668 million dollars domestic and six hundred and thirty-two million dollars um, in other countries. Mm-hmm. Ridiculous. Hey, what do you think about Ocean's Eight? When is that supposed to come out? Isn't that a June movie? June release? June twenty-fourth? I don't know. Let's see. 
Ocean's 8, what we know so far. I mean, li- listen, I love the cast. I'm a huge Sandra Bullock nerd. I love her. Oh, my like, God. Really. I love Sandra Bullock um, movies, what is too. That? Miss Congeniality <laughs> is one of my favorite movies, Mine shockingly. Too. Like, it's ridiculous, but movie. it's funny as hell. Yeah. Um, isn't Michael Crane in that? Yeah. Or Michael Caine? Michael Caine. I knew what I meant, Michael Crane. Michael Crane. God damn it. Michael Crane. Michael Crane. Oh, June 8th. God, I'm fucking nearly dead on. I knew it was June. June 8th. Okay, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing this movie. I love uh, Kate Blanchett, and I, I'm ashamed to admit, but I'm not, so I'll just say it. I love Sandra Bullock movies. What? I have one more Michael Keaton movie to put down, and I'm like... Struggling over here. I'm trying to see which one I want to put. There's like a couple that could make the list here. Um, you know what though? I'm gonna put that one as Batman's there. Spoiler, and then um, just for fun, because no one ever fucking talks about this movie. Okay, I have my list in no particular order. Okay, let me just read this headline really quick. Sure. Ryan Reynolds hilariously campaigns for Deadpool to appear in the Fast and the Furious spinoff. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds. Quick. What a ridiculous person. What does it say? Bless. Bless his heart. Uh, so David Leach, the guy, I think that's the guy that's directing the new Deadpool movie, right? Mm. So he said buckle up and it was news on the new Fast and the Furious movie. Ryan Reynolds tagged David Leach and said, you promised Deadpool was in this. <laughs> You said I get to play the non, the no nonsense police chief who yells at Hobbs for crashing his fifty eight valve Nissan Sentra into an Olive Garden. <laughs> Put me in, Coach. <laughs> Love that oh, dork. All right, let's hear your list. Okay, so in no particular order here, and I feel like I'm gonna have missed one, and you're gonna be like, "What the fuck, man? How can you miss that one?" Well, you better not have missed Beetlejuice. I did totally. What the fuck, man? You missed one. Yeah, I did. I, I. I... What did you erase to change to Beetlejuice? My other favorite movie from that era, Multiplicity. Wow, Multiplicity didn't make the list. No. What are the other ones? Obviously, okay. Spi- let me guess. Obviously, Spider-Man Homecoming. Yes. Beetlejuice. Yep. 89 Batman. Both Batmans as a co-headliner. Okay, so Batman Returns Batman. and Batman. He played Batman. I'm putting it as he so, was fucking the Batman. Okay, so the Batman movies that he was in. Okay, yep. How many did I name? Uh, Three. There's two you're missing. Michael Keaton. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Microphone Keaton. And you got rid of multiplicity. multiplicity. Yep. So tell me. So I give. Birdman. Oh, God. I forgot about Birdman. That was a great movie. Obviously. And The Other Guys. His role in The Other Guys is one of my favorite comedic roles that Michael Keaton has ever done. He's the police chief. He also oh. works at Bed Bath & Beyond. Um, so while he's the police chief, he's like, no nonsense, hard nose. He takes away Will Ferrell's gun and makes, uh, um, 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 I Mark, barely remember that movie. Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell have to team up together. And, I remember that. And they're not supposed to be teaming together. They're, they're supposed to be the other guys stuck in office duty mm-hmm. and they break into this big situation over, um, building permits and essentially, Michael Keaton's character, he, like I said, he's the police chief, but then he also works at Bed Bath & Beyond. So there's a scene where they run into him at Bed Bath & Beyond, and he starts incessantly quoting uh, TLC. Like, he's like, when you guys go to leave here, don't, you know, creep, creep. And they're like, wait, <laughs> sorry, do you like TLC? And he's like, what? I don't, I don't know what you guys are talking about. But anyways, oh, guys, Michael if you're going to do this, good luck. And, uh, you know, if you're out there, be careful. Don't go chasing any waterfalls. And they're Weird. like, come on, you know, like they, because it's obviously a funny gag, but I love that movie. Again, The Rock is in that, as is Samuel L. Jackson, other guys, um, and Birdman. I mean, classic. Birdman was great. Uh, isn't that movie shot single shot? Something like, like that. Like from one perspective, the whole movie single shot. It's supposed to be. It's crazy. I loved that movie. The, I loved the, the score. I loved the jazz score. Yeah. You know what other movie that was jazzy had a great jazz score? Hmm. Whiplash. Did yeah, Whiplash, Whiplash was good. Yeah, we I saw Whiplash. That was good. Hell yeah. Um, okay, well, I made my list. You made your list. I think it just made the list. Well, hell yeah. Well, did you have anything else we wanted to dive into today on the Foodies Watching Movies? We have eaten at a couple cool places recently. Yeah, we've had some good food lately. We finally tried um, the chicken fried lobster tail and waffles at Red Lobster. God, I can't believe you said that. That's like... 
how is that even real? Oh my god, I don't know how it was real. It was so good. I mean, the the waffle was Cheddar Bay biscuit waffle. Yeah, what? it was like a sweet and Cheddar Bay biscuit waffle, and this lobster tail was so like buttery and delicious, but the breading on it was like crispy, crunchy, and perfect. and perfect, like crisp. Oh, it was delicious, covered in syrup. It was absolutely. Is that picture already on one of those? Or is one of those pictures already on our? No, foodies? we didn't post it on our so Instagram yet. We'll have to that. do that after this episode airs. You guys will be getting a hold of that one in the very soon future. We did here. post a couple of pictures here and there of our latest diner adventures. Yeah, I tried this place, Cooper Hawk. We tried this place, Cooper's Hawk. Cooper Cooper's Hawk. Hawk. Cooper's Hawk. It's a winery slash restaurant the weirdest day ever because that was not at all on the docket for the day at all yeah we were gonna go to an outback steakhouse with our friend and we pulled up and the outback um was well do you want to tell what happened I think someone destroyed their toilet, and they I were don't having know what some happened. Plumbing issues, so they turned us away at the door. They're like, "We're not closed, but we're going to be shut down for a couple hours while we get this plumbing situation taken care of." He's Here's like, "You can." F- he's like, "You can call back in like an hour or two. They seem like they're panicking, and we're like, "Uh, that's okay. We'll leave. Thanks." And then they gave us a coupon for a free blooming onion. Hell yeah! Which yeah. is like the main reason I wanted to go there because I never get to eat there. And I and love the still, Bloomin' Onions. And we still did not get to eat there. But now we have a free coupon to do that. So that place was out of the question, clearly. So we went to Cooper's Hawk, which was just across the street. And we got some dope food. Yeah, it there was, was some um, fancy pants delicious food. What was it? A shrimp and scallops risotto is what I had? Oh. Yeah, that had like sweet corn and pe- sweet peas and asparagus. That Spinach. Looked, that was good. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. A, and a Parmesan risotto or something. I had Parmesan-crusted steak medallions. Um, mashed potatoes and didn't you have Betty's mashed potatoes and I ordered an extra order of different potatoes I got Mary's potatoes with my dinner but then I ordered a side of the Betty's potatoes which was like uh, shredded hash browns white cheddar and chives oh yeah that was no it was uh, scallions scallions and they were so delicious it was really good like baked in a little ramekin kind of like scalloped hash browns yeah, that meal was out of sight. It, it was, was, and then we had like um, Mexican drunken shrimp. They were like bacon wrapped shrimp. And you dipped them in uh, the, like lime avocado guac sauce, and it was like, oh, yeah. it was just ridiculous. And like, we also got crab beignets as our appetizer. That was overload. Delicious. Anything with the word beignet, and I'm dope super ass beignets. In. Yeah, beignets. Workaholics are great. reference here. <laughs> But uh, I'm trying to think yeah, if we've, we've done. Yeah, we've any... had some good food adventures lately. I've yeah. been enjoying our eating excursions. I didn't even tell you guys what I got at Baker Square. No, you didn't. We do. We you started talking yours. about something else. Yeah, we jump around here. But to get back to that Baker Square meal, I had the albacore tuna melt. It was all right. Yeah. I was I was not feeling the best, so I tried to eat bland today. You went all American with the tuna melt and salad. It was very bland. It was the blandest lunch, but I feel okay. So I'm. That's great. I'm, I'm, I'm it did its purpose. Die. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, are you about ready to wrap this one? I'm today? ready. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, folks, as always, you can check out Foodies Watching Movies on all the different social medias, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Facebook and Instagram, Foodies Watching Movies on Twitter. We are Film Foodies. Also, folks, you can get us at the Journey into Comics Network at journeyintocomics.com. You go to journeyintocomics.com. You can get all the different shows on the network, except for Game Addicts Podcast. They're on gameaddictspodcast.com. Or you can go to patreon.com backslash journeyintocomics. Give us a buck. Get the early access. Give us three bucks. Get early access. Exclusive content. That includes the Road to Infinity War comic club, Journey into Wrestling specials, butt stuff specials, um, foodies watching movies, extra content, fourth meal stuff that we've only done a couple times here. We've got, uh, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff you get exclusively for just giving us three bucks a month, and that helps us to build our network and to make it bigger and better, folks. Always, uh, when you're going on to your different podcasting sites, whether it's iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher Radio, Google Play Music, or Spotify, search Journey into Comics Network. You can get Foodies Watching Movies on that one feed along with Journey into Comics, The Poor Report, Journey into Wrestling, Podcastrophy Game Addicts, Butt Stuff, Voices Survival Podcast, Brews with Dudes, and Literature with new stuff coming down the pipe so soon. V, I think that's going to do it for this week. Yeah. Are you all right? I just listened to you say a lot of things. You I just did the most professional promo I could cut <laughs> in the shortest amount of time. That's like concise. I'm just sitting here like my hair is like blowing back behind my face. Are you like, the Maxell guy? <laughs> yeah. In the chair? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, so much plugging. 
I don't know. We were going to call this episode something else, but we're going to have to save that title yeah, for we'll when we end truth. up doing the seven episode. Yeah, we'll think of a title It'll later. It'll be definitely something good. But uh, yeah, definitely. we'll figure out what the title for this one is at some point, folks. But as always, for foodies watching movies, I've been Nate. I'm Veronica. This was season two, episode 17. We will see you guys next time, and make sure to eat fearless.